What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Team Pizza Plays Punch Club. I am, I am, of course, what the fnu, and I am watching you sleep right now. Yep, but I'm not even asleep, or maybe That's I'm just, or maybe I'm just in a waking dream. That's what you're getting at. No, you're just sleep at the wheel. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember very strongly the day I first discovered I can make that noise. Oh, it's like, really? yes, I can actually do a sound effect. <laughs> this is exciting me, to me. I, I have a talent that not many people have figured out yet. For me, the day I learned how to curl my lips and pretend to be an older person was a magical day because I... I'm very easily impressed. You might actually get some mileage out of that, considering all the references this game makes. Which, yeah. I'm I'm not gonna lie, in most games, references are out of place, but considering the premise of this game to begin with, it actually makes a lot of sense. Oh, it does. It really does. Alright, so basically, what we're doing right now is, uh, by foot, three hours... Yeah, we can do that. Start our job over here, because we're getting stats out of this, too. Ooh. Like, a, they're, they're minute, but we're still getting little bonuses out of this. Plus, it's extra cash as well on top of that. Alright, it's a little bonus day. What did you get with your little bonus? A restraining order so I don't have to hear you talk ever again. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hundred bucks. If we get up to a hundred and fifty... Oh, wow, that actually lowered our... Uh, Oh no, it, it it has a little sad face on it, so... Oh no, it's sadgasm. Yeah, so it's lowering our training efficiency, that's what they were talking about. Let's eat a steak, we... go sleep, and then we'll watch some TV. Sounds if like only... a good day. If only this were like the shit, if only this was... If only this were like Persona, where you could just train until everyone hates you. <laughs> and, then, and then make everyone love you through school events. <laughs> if only life were like that. I remember, I got really lucky during Persona. I only had one guy get angry at me over the fact that I was spending a lot of time with other people instead of him. And it took months. It took months in in-game time before he finally said, Hey, what's wrong with you, man? We haven't talked in forever. <laughs> Hey, it's like, hey, man, what's wrong with you? I haven't called or talked to you like an actual human being. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's man. Like, I'm multiclassing. There are too many pe. There are too many friends, man. It's like here's something I never like. I know it's you know the per the that the principle of the game is socializing, you know, meeting all these people and whatnot. But the fact that they don't act like a hum act like human beings and say, oh, he's spending time with that other person, cool. And, uh, you know, just say, hey, want to hang out later? But, but, you know, but instead, just get angry at you is kind of frustrating. Mm. I mean, no, granted, I can, that's I can also, see that. I can see that. I mean, it's also strangely human behavior in and of itself because people do weirdly get angry at you for no logical reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's buy that speed bag. Or, no, it's 200 bucks. You said we should. Oh, screw it! I'm here anyway, and I want to. And I don't want to risk getting robbed on the way home. I guess we're focusing down agility now. We won't hit very hard, and we won't be very durable. But damn it, we will punch you the sh. And we will hit you with so many punches, it won't even matter. <laughs> we'll be so. We'll be the fastest. We'll be the fastest man alive. <laughs> we'll be the fastest man alive. Pretty much, yeah. You know, it's always it's also funny how a lot of times when Sonic's average speed is brought up, you think that for someone who can, you know, easily exceed the speed of light and go faster than that, you think his average speed would be more than simply Mach 1. Mm. I mean, granted, the Flash, who could easily exceed the speed of thought... You wrap your mind around that. <laughs> had, had an, he had an average cruising speed of Mach 1, but I've always wanted to see Sonic just get clocked in faster than that. I wanted there to be a moment where it's like, 
Oh, hey, we're Sonic, right here. What the fuck? I did not even hear you show up. That's yeah, the point. I know, right? <laughs> I want that so bad. It's like... sort of, he's sort of like a B2 bomber. By the time you hear him, it's already too late. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I want, like, I... It's like, if there's ever going to be a, a, new, another, a new Sonic video game, capitalize on that. Really just show what it's like to live in a world with something that moves that fast. Mm -hmm. Like, one of my favorite ads for Metal Gear was for Metal Gear Solid 4, where it, the ad is just showing things from a, a regular mook's perspective. <laughs> and then the, the, you just see from their perspective, they just look at their camera, look around, look at their camera, all of a sudden snakes right up to, next to them, and he just punches their shit out. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's what it's like to be on the battlefield with Snake. Terrifying. Surprise! Exactly! I always wanted to play a game where you get to see things from the monster's perspective. Yes! In fact, one of my favorite TV tropes, Mook Horror Show. It's where the horrible, unstoppable serial killer is the hero. <laughs> because that's essentially what you are. I mean, in fact, comes back to the 80s action movie thing. They are the serial killers. Yeah. My god. I'll never forget what he did to Frank. Oh my god, you see what he did to Frank? What happened? Well, Frank was just minding his own business. All of a sudden, Monster just shows up around the corner, eats him, and sends, sends his ghost back to the back to the nether. It was horrifying. Alright, everybody, pull out your Team Pizza Plays bingo cards, because I'm about to talk about Undertale again, but seriously, that, that game did a very good job of that. Of... Not making you feel guilty for fighting the monsters, but doing a good job of asking the question, why do you have to kill them? Like, what's the point? Is there a particular reason you're doing it, or is it just because you think it's fun or something to that effect? If so, that's kind of fucked up. <laughs> because it's like, let's take, I mean, let's take a look at one of the most harmless, most, one of the most happy, innocuous characters, Kirby. I love how that activity takes barely ener any energy to do. Yeah. <laughs> That's a nice little touch. It's like, when you think about it, Kirby is an unrepentant, can't, unrepentant serial killer. Mm. I mean, especially when you consider the fact that when he eats someone, quote-unquote, he's sending them to the Phantom Zone, uh -huh. where they can't escape. So, yeah. Kirby. <laughs> And no, this isn't us going, man, all the things we love are horrible. No, it's us, it's us just going, man, living in a world with a character like that must be terrifying if you're on the wrong side. <laughs> when he eats you, he steals all your soul, and then he'll go do your girlfriend. <laughs> That's pretty much what Kirby does. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very different Nintendo continuity we're coming up with here. <laughs> then again, it's not hard to make fun of the Nintendo universe. Oh, trust me. This is the universe where a happy pink blob cannibalizes his friends while a while a crazy well a Don't check your phone by the way guys that was his. I can confirm that now. In well, the same universe a crazy psycho commando goes around in space fighting space dragons. <laughs> you ever play uh what's that called? Metroid Metroid Prime? Yes, I have actually. I love that game. I've got the trilogy collection just sitting there on my desk. You know not the on log? my desk in my um my my what's it the the bookcase over there the thing that holds my games keeps them organized so I don't have to. You know the you know those journal logs where they go oh man that horrible monster keeps killing us <laughs> and she's unstoppable she just won't st she won't quit. Wait there are two of her oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Great as if we didn't have enough problems she's multiplying. Oh god, they're breeding. I've never seen a I've never seen a disaster like this before. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think I think it's time to go buy that uh, treadmill that we originally thought we were going to. So, let's finish two rounds of this job. I noticed it takes longer to fill up the this bar, or at least it feels like it does. It doesn't drain the stats as much, and it doesn't um, pay me as much, but I don't know, for some reason this job just feels way more efficient. 
If it's not, though, I completely apologize, and I'm sorry that it's frustrating that you're watching me do it. No, it's fine. Yeah, we Isn't can go by bus. Because we have the $200 that we need for this anyway. Treadmill! There's an episode of The Simpsons where Homer, where, um, Marge is, no, Flanders, someone who is better than Homer is proctoring Bart's little Boy Scout, Boy Scout troop. And they, and you know, they're talking about being good to the land and recycling. And over the other side of the pond, Homer backs his car up to the lake, then drops a treadmill in there going, How do you like that inclined treadmill? <laughs> <laughs> and then they look at Homer, Homer looks at them, and he just goes, I'm giving it, giving it back to the earth. <laughs> <laughs> He's, yeah, Simpsons was very good at that back in the day, wasn't it? Just very good situational humor. They were fantastic. They perfected what it meant to have a sitcom, a situation of comedy. Mm -hmm. But honestly, but honestly for me... They won't leave you alone. It keeps happening. The noises, they won't leave. Trust me, I'm pretty much going to turn my phone off after this. <laughs> The oh, sad part is, it's the last recording of the day, too, so while I appreciate the effort... Oh, you know, I'm just not going to answer the message. <laughs> That's actually even more efficient. We're 30 oh, days... We're, <laughs> we're 27 days into this, and all of our stats are back to point one. I don't know how to be efficient in this game, guys. I'm sorry, I'm trying to fill up my garage with all of the stuff, and it won't let me. <laughs> That way I won't have to pay for the gym anymore. The ten bucks I would have had to spend to go to the gym. Is it worth all of this hassle? Is it really now? You know... Look at the slippery slope we're going down. At this rate, you'll never get your revenge. The guy will die of old age before we spend enough days to get all the equipment we need. <laughs> well, you see, at that point, patience is the true combat skill. <laughs> <laughs> Why bother with revenge anyway? He's just gonna die of old age eventually. It comes back to an, another episode of The Simpsons where Marge becomes a famous artist and she paints Mr. Burns as this as the thin, frail old man that he really is. Huh. And, and saying, This is this frail old man is the cause of all your trouble. And everyone's like, you know, she's right. He's a bastard, but he'll die. <laughs> 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 I love that too in like the I I think it's Lisa's wedding. Yeah. Where Mr. Burns is there and he breaks in half. <laughs> because Smithers had been keeping him in cryo lock for like 30 years. <laughs> so when he tries to sit down, his body just snaps in half. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shows are great, aren't they? They really are. Fact, you know, let's keep hyping up the things people could be watching instead of us right now. Oh, well, in that case, man, Godzilla was a fantastic film, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I won't take that away from you. That was actually a pretty good movie. Oh, did you know they're making a... Japan Toho, the company that makes Godzilla films, are making another one soon enough. Yes, and they're also working on my dream movie, too. I actually tweeted out about this. They're Ooh. actually making, a, a, they have on the docket, on the schedule, a King Kong versus Godzilla film. They're actually making, they're actually making another one? They're doing it. They're it's happening. <gasps> dreams do come true. It's not coming till like 2018, but still, dreams do come true. Oh my god, have you seen the original 60s version? I have, actually, and it's why I wanted a modern remake so badly. I'm oh. pretty sure they're not going to do my plan, which was essentially make a Japanese and American version. In the American version, <laughs> King Kong wins. In the Japanese version, Godzilla wins. <laughs> but hey, I'll, ta I'll take what I can get. <laughs> For me, when I first saw that movie, I had seen several of the later films because I'd been watching them out of order because I was still just a tadpole. Mm -hmm. So when I saw this magical masterpiece, it seemed like it just came out of nowhere. I was thinking, what? These two actually fight? And it's and, and it's like, you know, usually when I watch a Godzilla movie, you know, there's the dun 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 dun. But here, the when Kong and Godzilla meet, it's you got this like Bruce Lee Kung Fu movie music going like, dun it, 
right. I need to... Basically, what I think what my plan is right now, I'm trying to fill up my garage with all my training things so that I can just cycle between all of them and my training will stay potent. And I also won't have to travel anywhere and waste any time or money because my fridge will be full of food, I can just eat that, then I can go back in the garage and train some more, build up all my stats, and then we'll finally be ready for the Rookie League. Great shot, kid, but you think you could take on the world? <laughs> No better yet the Family Guy joke. <laughs> Rocky, you can't go and fight the Martians. You just can't. There's no air up there for you to breathe. There needs no air for him to breathe either. <laughs> <laughs> I can't fault him on that. He's got a point. <laughs> I mean, why do they need a ship to begin with? If they didn't need to breathe, if they needed to breathe, they wouldn't. They would have just swam to us. <laughs> I love insane troll logic like that. <laughs> it's part of me living on 4chan for four years. I just love it when people take incredible leaps. I remember I was, I was playing a video game. Ooh, yeah, one of my favorite games of all time. Manakimia. Manakimia. Mm -hmm. Manakimia, yeah. Thank you, Manakimia. And everyone in the lounge, everyone in the college lounge is just saying, draw man, just go level grind. You, you don't need to, you have nothing to prove here. And I said, yes, I do have everything to prove. What's that, that I have something to prove? <laughs> and then everyone just kept saying, well, Armand, draw man, you can't. See, now you got me doing it. <laughs> and I was like, oh, draw, come on, draw man. He, he, it's like, you can't even see what's going on now. They're really jacking you up. And I'm like, well, they can't see me either, so it's even. <laughs> oh, I love Manakempia. I, uh, which one is that again? Like, explain the premise to me, and be really specific, because these games tend to bleed into each other after a while. Oh, yeah, so, okay, let's see. Let's see, let's try to bring it together. And by bring it together, I'm gonna go on the internet. Uh, <laughs> here we go. Um... Basically, the premise is the students are at Al, Rev Al Revis Academy where they train in alchemy to become alchemists. And much like in Full Metal Alchemist, mag alchemy is functional magic. Oh, now I know what you're talking about. Like, um, yeah, one of the characters was this ghost girl. Yep. And then you had that whole dungeon where you have to go into the, into the basement of that one building. Yep. Yeah, okay, I remember this now. You had the skill book. Which yeah. I thought was a really cool mechanic at the time, because it was basically game balancing built into the lore. And what makes it even better, what I loved about it is that, uh, I've seen other games do this, but the system wherein you can see when your turn's coming up, when the enemy's turn is coming up. Yeah, that's also really nice in turn-based combat, when you know everything's going to happen. Again, Undertale does this very easily by just say keeping one player character one oppo one set of opposing characters and they all attack you at once because of the systems in that game so it all works together in the end and here's why the game is one of my favorites because the when i when a friend of my when a friend of ours was letting me play it she had stuck herself on the level where we fight this chimera boss which she had not been able to pass and so i thought challenge accepted i'll pass it for her and that's when everyone said, draw, man, you can't do it. No, just stop. I'd, I'd lost once. Once. And after that, it was time. After that, it was go time. Yeah. I will prove them wrong. I, and so I thought to myself, okay, wait a minute. This move, right? So I started, like, actually reading the character's moves to see if I could maximize any chance of victory. You were no. min-maxing, essentially. In an anime yeah. RPG. I love it. It was great. I was mid-maxing it during the boss battle. I was like, wait, this guy takes away turns from the enemy? I'm just gonna spam that for a minute. <laughs> really, there's a guy who just straight up takes away the enemy's turns. And I thought, wait a minute, they're, they're letting me do this? So I just kept spamming that, and all of a sudden, victory just came so easy. <laughs> and after that, I won. And after that, I won. I put down the controller, put my hands up. And everyone you all said, said it couldn't be done. Everyone looked at me like, oh my god, Drawman actually achieved a victory. What <laughs> is wrong here? <laughs> I don't know what this says about either him or the game. <laughs> but she, 
the girl who let me play the game, she also got me back because she didn't tell me where to go to save. Ah. Uh. So, I was going, wait a minute, you told me to go here? Yeah, I know. This isn't the safe spot. I know, right? <laughs> you cheeky bastard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we saved, of course. And after that, things just kept going even better for me. And everyone's going, why are you on top of things today? Why are you winning? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. I notice we tend not to get robbed a whole lot if I take the bus. Contrary to real life. <laughs> it's like, hmm. We're a little over 20 minutes here, so as soon as we ba buy the last piece of training equipment, three episodes in and we'll finally be starting to make some actual progress on our character. Hmm. Progress. Do you really want that? Uh, yes, actually, eventually. I want some exciting things to happen. Hmm. You want excitement, eh? Mm-hmm. So... One day, the Nostalgia Critic was reviewing... Well, he was he was actually interviewing the cast of The Animaniacs. Mm. Oh yeah, I think I remember that interview. As such, they were talking to him, he was asking, you know, what, what's the source, what's the secret of comedy, you know? How'd you guys achieve this level of gold? And so they said, well, you know, it's all timing. So imagine, Mr. Critic, uh-huh, you're walking through the jungle, uh-huh, everything is calm, uh-huh. Everything's great, uh-huh. Then an elephant poops on your face. What? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, gotta hand it to you. That's a pretty good example. <laughs> oh, the Animaniacs. <laughs> <laughs> that is one of my great source points of in inspiration in life. Yeah, I like most people. I keep citing different sources for this. I, they all just kind of blur into each other after a while, to be too honest with you. But mm -hmm. it's one of the first shows I actually started laughing at legitimately. Yeah. There we go. We've got all three of the basic stats covered. So if I go home now, by foot, because I don't have any money to steal anyway... <laughs> I, we've got an empty fridge, so I can't do- I can't go on my training regimen anyway, because I'd have to go somewhere to buy food, which would require money, which requires more frigging work! Fine. Be that way. Ooh, I love that anger. Mmm, it tastes so good, mm. You know what also tastes really good? Meat, which I don't have in my fridge. You know? I know some orphans. I mean, I know some Don't. Orphans. Just just don't, man. <laughs> don't death spank it. I... Yeah. Death sp I, I love death spank and it's unrepentant hatred of orphan children. <laughs> I love a lot of things about that game. Let's see here. Oh, we got a goal! It tastes good. I see that you like it, but you probably eat healthier food. Thanks, I'm never afraid of work. Pizza place. Hmm. More jobs we can take on, perhaps? Uh, but we've got zero energy anyway. New place to go. Wait, where? Cafe. Mix office. Oh. Oh, that's probably how we could find out about the ca find out about the cafe normally, without having to fight that one dude. Oh, but where's the fun in that? <laughs> You gotta fight for your right to go questing. Exactly. It's like I will challenge you to a fight. No one challenges. No one can challenge me to a fight unless they've bested me in combat. Wait. Okay, bro. Have fun with that. <laughs> That's another show. It's the the same friend who let me play Monokemia. She introduced me to Tower of Doraga. <laughs> and basically, it's. No, I know what that is, actually. Yeah, Tower of Duraga for me was a disappointment only because the first episode makes Lampoon's the entire genre so perfectly that to just have it be a... a to, to an event, for it to eventually become the thing that it hates. Exactly. Yeah. It just felt like a waste. I, I was actually hoping that the whole series would just be the first episode. Mm. Just the entirety of the series is just... Let's just make fun of the adventure genre. I mean, yeah. I don't hate the adventure genre. I just wish Tower Duraga had just been nothing but make fun of it. 
That's actually one of the reasons why I like Naruto. One of the reasons I got into Naruto is because they were just basically making fun of the the shonen protagonist. Mm. It's like, here's your lovable goofball. No, he is literally a goofball. He is bad at everything. He's shunned by everybody he knows. <laughs> Every, like even the even the children think doesn't even the children don't like him, and he, he just wants to chill and eat microwavable noodles. All right, time to go to the store. Oh, but again, my love for Naruto. Like again, I I have my jokes for Naruto and everything, but I love Naruto. Mm-hmm. Buy that. Fill up on pizza. Uh, hell, we've got some extra money. How about uh, buy two energy drinks just in case? All right. After all that, after all the running around, after all of the eating, sleeping, pooping, and going straight to work, we finally have a garage full of training equipment. Draw man, yeah. I think we're ready to finally start our training regimen. I think we're ready to finally start the game. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready to get revenge? Oh, I am always ready for revenge. Let's do this. All right, and we will start begin the path to redemption next time on Team Pizza Plays Punch Club. Until then, I'm What the Fnew. And I am already getting my list of 80s inspirational music in order. <laughs> and we will see you again next time. Later, everybody. Later.